that in Washington. I'm not asking you to begin that, Father, in the capitals of each state. I ask you to birth that fire within the church of Jesus Christ. Across this nation, Heavenly Father, that we stand in repentance before you for the hardness of our heart, for the callousness of our heart, for the waywardness of our life, for the lack of focus that we have upon you, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Father, as you forgive us, as we repent, I pray that this nation will begin to arise and understand that the hope of this nation has been and will always be through Jesus Christ. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as you burn these revival fires, begin in us. Begin in the church. Let repentance come first in us. And then let it move as a wave across this nation from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Father, I ask you and give you thanks for all that is accomplished. Thank you, Father, that the, the remnant in the United States, the church of Jesus Christ, who seeks you passionately, is the reason, Father, that vengeance, that, that judgment has not been poured upon this nation for the sins of this nation. But, Father, I pray, draw us to our knees in the name of Jesus. Draw this nation to its knees in repentance and crying out for once again for a move of God in our lives. Father, we ask you once again, God, bless this nation Bless this nation with revival fire, and we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I've got a word for you this morning as we continue our series, Keys to Your Promotion. And I want to bring to you a premise this morning, and very short this morning, but a premise that I believe is important. God's promotion is not connected to your position. God's promotion is in your life is not connected to your position. God's promotion is connected to his presence. For God's presence is not found in a building. God doesn't live in this church. Let me say that again. God does not live in this church. If you were to go on the street and ask somebody, where is the church? They'd point at this building, but this building is not the church. We are the church of Jesus Christ. And his presence doesn't abide in a building. His presence abides in the temple of this building, of our body, of our being. And, and it is, if we're going to seek promotion on our jobs, careers, financially, relationally, or any other aspect of our life, it will come through his presence. My word to you this morning is we want to continue to focus on his presence. A lot of people will change their position in life, be promoted on their jobs, uh, granted blessing in their relationships in every aspect of their life, an increase in their income, but it doesn't change their life at all. Because the only change that can come in life is not through promotion in this world, but through promotion of the Spirit in our own life. Real promotion from God is not a decrease in the debt of our life or an increase in our pay. Promotion that comes from God occurs when there is an increase of His presence in our life. And can I tell you, an increase of his presence, again, is not just in this building, but on your jobs as well. Do you know that when you go to work, God is there with you? Do you know that? God is right there with you. He doesn't abandon you when you walk out of this building. He doesn't abandon you when you leave your house or leave your car or bus to go into your job. He's right there with you. And his favor rests upon you every single day, every moment of the day. It is important that we commit to the process of faithfulness to God and faithfulness to his house. Can I say thank you for being here today? Thank you for joining. Thank you for putting off any other concern of your life, any other obligation that you have to be in the house of the Lord or to join with us online. Thank you for that commitment that you've made. And by the way, I would suggest to you that God will honor that commitment. And just as importantly, I want to encourage you to commit to God's presence everywhere you go in your maximum impact environment. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, in the Amplified Version says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Amplified Version says liberty, emancipation from bondage, and true freedom. Wherever the Lord is found, there is freedom. Which means, when you go to work on Monday, or this afternoon, or whenever it is you go to work, you are free. Because God liberates you. Well, my boss, he, he tries to put me in bondage. Too bad. God set you free. And nobody can put you in bondage when God has already set you free. Contemporary English version says, and the Lord's spirit sets us free, sets us at liberty. 
And where the Lord is, and may I testify to you more this morning, where the Lord is, and he is with me, is he with you? Where the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty, and there is God's favor in our life. Godly promotion implies an execution of God's plan for your life, and if he executes his plan for your life, it will also be for his kingdom. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know what I'm doing. I've all planned out. Plans to take care of you and not abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. And more beautifully, not only the future that you hope for, but the future that he has planned for your life. And God's plans for you are much greater than your plans for yourself. When God promotes, he moves us forward. When God promotes, he causes us to grow. When God promotes, he raises us up and elevates us from where we were. And when God promotes, he advances us from where we were to where he wants us to be. And we've covered, let me read our text first of all, and then I want to cover the thing we covered last week and share with you one thing in an uh, introduction to what God desires that we do. Psalms chapter 75, verse 6 and 7 says, I know this, favor that brings promotion and power doesn't come from anywhere on earth. For no one exalts, no one promotes a person but God, the true judge of all. He alone determines where his favor rests. He anoints one for greatness and brings another down to his knees. Do you know your promotion doesn't come by your boss? Do you hear me? Your promotion doesn't come by your boss, your employer, your supervisor. Your promotion comes from the Lord. Now, it may come through your boss, supervisor, or employer. It may come through that. But the motivation of that is not on their own, not by themselves, but the favor of God that rests upon you. When you go to work tomorrow, God's favor rests upon your life. And can I tell you what God's favor is? It's a big spotlight. It's a big spotlight that, that lights upon your life so that everyone who sees you sees the glory of God in your life. And consider this. When God promotes, it is for your blessing, but it is also for the kingdom's blessing. I want, to, I want to share, last Sunday I talked to you about this, that if we're going to be promoted, if we're going to pre pre present ourselves to the Lord for promotion, we've got to clean out the closets of our heart. Ephesians 4, and 24 says, put, to put off the old self, clean out the closets, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. You've got to allow the Lord to clean up your life. Don't keep doing the things you used to do. Let God change or transform your life. But today... Very quickly, let me give you the second point. And I think this is a very practical thing that every believer ought to embrace in their life. If you want to be promoted, you've got to give, some, you've got to give God something to work with. You've got to give God something to work with. I can't tell you the number of times I've heard people pray, Lord, give me a job. Lord, open the door and give me a job. And all the while they're sitting at home waiting for something to happen. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you pray for God to give you a job and then you sit on your rear end waiting for something to happen, nothing likely to happen. You've got to get out and look for a job. You've got to get out and hit the streets. But I'll tell you this, when you do, God's favor will rest upon you. When I pray for people to receive jobs, I often pray as they fill out an application, let the, let the favor of God rest on that application. Did you know that God's favor can rest on a piece of paper? That when somebody picks up that paper who makes the decision about employment, that they can pick up that paper and it may say everything about you that you've written down, but what isn't written down will be revealed as a favor of God coming into their life. It's the supernatural that's written on ink on a piece of paper that's revealed by the Spirit of the Lord. you got to do something. You know, we live in a time now where where people know all their rights and their rules. They know my job description. I tell you, I've, I've heard people say, I'm not going to do that because that's not a part of my job description. Well, shame on you. You can live by the minimum, and you'll receive the minimum. Or you can live on the maximum, and you can receive the blessings of the Lord. The favor of God. You've got to give God something to work with. If you're willing to do, and so many people today are just working for a paycheck. It's all they work for, just a paycheck. And can I tell you, if all you're working for is a paycheck, that's all you're going to get. It's all you're going to get. You're going to live and die by the paycheck. But if you live for the glory of God and you live, do your job as unto the Lord, he will bless you and his favor will rest upon you. And it'll be more than a paycheck. I, I just tell you, and, and some of the young folk here and some of the old folk, if you're not retired yet, I'm talking to you. You've got to be willing to do more than the minimum. My dad used to say, cream rises to the top. The best 
the sweetest rises to the top. And I will tell you, if you're willing to do more than the minimum, hear me today, if you're willing to do more than the minimum, if you're willing to go the extra mile, as the Bible says, if you're asked to go one mile, you're compelled to go two miles. If you're willing to do that on your job, God will bless you. God's favor will shine upon your life, and your employer will see your good works. Though you're not doing it for your employer, the benefit will be for the employer, the benefit will be for the supervisor, the benefit will be for the boss. But you're not doing it for the boss, you're doing it for the Lord, for the glory of God. And when you do that, we talked about keys to the windows of heaven. When you're willing to give God something to work with, clay, that's what the Bible calls us, that we're clay and we have to be moldable. If clay says, I'm going to be a jar, God says, no, you're not. I'm going to be a jar. God may just take that clay and put it on the, on the shelf and then take a pliable clay that's willing to say, well, whatsoever will, let it be done in my life. And he'll begin to mold it and shape it and the glory of God will rest upon that clay. A masterpiece. But you've got to be willing to do more than the minimum. You've got to be willing to give God something to work with. Hear me. God will do his part. Promised he would. And he who promised is faithful. God will do his part. But brother and sister, we got to do our part too. We've got to be willing to do our part. Well, Pastor Steve, I've, I've done my best. I've given the second mile and it just seems they take advantage of me. Hold on. Hold on. Because God won't let them take advantage of you. God's glory will be seen. God's presence will be seen. God's favor. And can I tell you, there are some people that are promoted not by their present supervisor, but the people that are over them as well. Because God's light will shine in your life. But you've got to be willing to do something. I've heard and seen people on social media argue. A boss will tell them, I want you to do, come in five minutes early. I'm not coming in five minutes early. You're going to pay me? I'm not coming in five minutes early unless you pay me. Hey, get over it. Get over it. Give your best. In fact, give better than your best. Give your all to the glory of God. That's what the Bible says. Don't do it as unto man. Do it as unto the Lord. I'll assure you of this. I'll assure you of this. If, you know, if you'll do your part, God will do his part. I've testified to that. I've witnessed to that. I've experienced that in my life. I've told you the story. I'm not going to tell you again. My dad said, if you see something that needs to be done, don't wait for somebody to ask you. Just take the initiative and do it yourself. Man, I wasn't on the job so long at all until my boss called me and Mr. Anderson called me to his office. Steve Banning, see you in my office. I had my head down thinking, oh my goodness. He called me to his office and said, Banning, I've been watching you. I'm going to tell you what, that's a part of a supervisor's responsibility, part of a manager's responsibility to watch. And if you're willing to do more than the minimum, if you're willing to do more, if everyone on your job is working for a paycheck and you're willing to do a little bit more, you will shine like the rising sun and God will anoint your life and God's blessing. But you've got to give God something to work with. If you do what everybody else does, you see, God hasn't called us to be like everybody else. God hasn't called, come out from among them, the word says. God's called you to be the light of Jesus Christ in your maximum impact environment. And if anyone will hear me this morning, I guarantee you, according to God's word, I guarantee you, God's favor will shine upon your life and your promotion is on the way. And by the way, that's in regards to relationships as well. You're a husband, don't do the minimum. Do more than the minimum, as under the Lord. If you're a wife, don't do the minimum. Do more than the minimum, as under the Lord. And God will bless your marriage. Oh, good preaching, Pastor Steve. Keep it up. Write a book. Write a book. <laughs> Write a book. Give God something to work with. And whatever it is, may be nothing in everybody, else's, in everybody else's eyes, but if you give God your best, he will bless your life. Can I hear an amen? amen? I want to encourage you in faith that God is watching over you and he will see you through. I want to pray for those of you that need promotion on your job specifically. If you need a promotion, if you need advancement, if you need a blessing on your job, stand to your feet. We're going to pray. And we're going to believe that God's going to do that. But at the same time, I challenge you. I challenge you. Be the best. On that job, be the best. And don't, you don't have to boast in yourself. You don't have to boast about what you do. Let God do the boasting. 
You boast about the Lord and let God take care of the rest. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. For these online and these on campus, I pray you see your children standing. Father, you've watched over their lives. And I pray that as they begin this new week, new month, that this month will be a month of advancement in the name of Jesus. This month will be month, a declared month of promotion in the name of Jesus. For those that are looking for employment, Lord, open the doors in the name of Jesus. For those that are on the jobs, I pray, Father, as they give their best, as unto you for your glory and your honor, for the smile on your face, that you will uh, uh, overshadow them and bless them and shine upon them with your favor that their supervisor's eyes will be open, favor will be seen. Their boss's eyes will be open, favor will be seen. And that you'll advance them, Lord God, in every way. Not only to advance them economically, but advance them in your presence. Father, I pray, may your blessing be established, may your faithfulness be seen, and may the glory of the Lord be established in every heart and every life as we give you praise and declare promotion in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a praise offering and thanksgiving this morning. You may be seated. And we are expecting to hear fruit results of these prayers this morning, that God will bring the promotion, not only on jobs, but also in relationships as well. Praise the Lord. Give God something to work with. And by the way, not only on your job, give God something to work with in the church as well. Amen? That is just pretty... Pretty sparse amen, but I'll take it what I get. We're going to receive a missions offering this morning. And those of you, that, again, for our guests, you're not obligated to give in this offering. But we, we partner with our missionaries all over the world to reach a hurting humanity at home and around the world in places that are dangerous, places that are, if it be known what our missionaries stood for, it would be dangerous in their lives. There's a theme that many of our missionaries live by, and that is live dead. Live dead. Live willing to give your life for the cause of Jesus Christ. We're not talking about missionaries in the past. We're talking about missionaries in the 21st century as well. Willing to give. And as they give and they go, we are the ones that send them. Here at Brazewood, we've not been able to increase our missionaries in the last several years because of income. In fact, the only missionaries that we have added to our list of missionaries that we support is if a missionary drops off through a change in their status or retirement or whatever. And I want to encourage you to know that our co-pastor, Pastor John, is the one now that determines if a missionary is added, who that missionary is, through prayer and intercession. And I want to encourage you, for those of you that have been faithful in your stewardship, faithful in your missions giving and your pledges over the years, thank you so much. For that faithfulness. But for those of you that have never given, this is an opportunity for you to invest. It's an eternal investment. In fact, it's a heavenly investment that we make as we support our missionaries as they go, supporting them not only with our finances, but also with our prayer and our intercession, believing that God is going to open the doors, open the opportunities, and that salvation will come to those that need to know. You know there are people that have never heard the name of Jesus Christ uttered other than in profanity. They need to know Jesus, both at home and around the world. So I want to encourage you. And, and can I just say, to make a pledge, a monthly pledge, doesn't have to be large amounts of money. If you are blessed to do that, that would be wonderful. But any amount is a great amount that will be invested in the kingdom. And I believe that there will be no regrets when we get to heaven. If there are any regrets, and I don't believe there will be, it's perhaps a regret that, regret that we didn't do a little bit more. But let's make that decision today that we're going to serve the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to invest in our missionaries. The greatest in the kingdom are those that have gone out. Some, Heavenly Father, that have determined that they're going to go and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, whatever the cost may be to them. And I pray, Lord, you'll surround them with your favor and the shield to keep them protected. And Father, I pray that as the word goes out, there will be many, many souls that will be committed to Jesus Christ that heaven will be filled through the service, through the investment of our missionaries. We give you honor and praise. And I thank you for these, Lord, that over the years have been faithful in their giving to missions. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that even today you'll put it upon the heart of somebody here who has never given to be committed, Father, to giving great or small, to be able to give as an investment in the kingdom. And I give you praise and thanks as we receive this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen.